My name is Alex Williamson, and uh, just recently I've seen um, I've seen a lot of people doing some really cool sort of volunteer and charity work with people with various disabilities, which I think is fantastic. And so much so that you know they just go out and they work with people who maybe not don't quite fit in their everyday society. And I'm actually doing that myself now, um, which is cool. I've taken it upon myself. I'm a registered volunteer. I go down there. I've got they give me three friends now that I take it every Sunday, and uh, they all have um, red hair. And, um, <laughs> and you're know, okay with that? I'm, I'm serious. I'm wrong with that. I'm, I'm seriously fine with that. Said, most of the time, I'm not even that ashamed to be seen with them. Seriously. I'm, 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 most of the time. Now, I would treat any one of my red-headed friends just like I treat any other of my household pets. Okay, so there is no. There is absolutely no favourites here at all. But you, you've got to be open-minded. I think this day and age is really important. Um, I found out last week I went to a sex shop here in Adelaide and I saw something so bizarre, I'd never seen it in my life, what it was. This is true, they're selling now inflatable sex toy farm animals, like inflatable cows, sheep, I know, incredible. And uh, I just remember standing there and thinking, who in their right mind, who is buying these things? Who needs an inflatable sex toy cow? And then I went home and I sort of thought about it and I thought, well maybe I'm being a bit harsh. You know, because like, you know, some people live in the cities, they don't have access to real life farm animals. <laughs> I shouldn't be so dismissive, really. <laughs> I was actually, I was watching Bondo Beach Rescue. The Bondo, you know the Bondo Beach Rescue on Talent and Channel 10? And uh, I don't like the show at all. I do not like the show at all. I, to be honest, I'd rather get a hand job from Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of I was watching it and I saw something on there that I thought was quite interesting. You might have seen it before down at your local sort of swimming centres or, or beaches. Have you ever noticed? That when a hot girl is drowning, everyone knows CPR. Everyone, everyone suddenly has their first aid training. Absolutely incredible. And I didn't know this either, but the methods of CPR actually change when a hot girl is drowning. The methods of CPR change. It's not just when a hot girl washes up. It's not just your traditional. <laughs> it's not just your traditional hands in the chest like that. It's a bit different. I learned this on Bondo Rescue. What you do, really important to clear the airways. You've got to expose the breast. Pull the breast out of the shirt. So important that one. So important. Next step. And this is for the ladies too. What you do is you, you, you get your hands, you just cut the breasts like that, and you just, just press them ever so gently. And it, 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 works, it works the lungs. Not too hard though, not too hard. You don't want to wake her. <laughs> just let her know you're there, okay? And, and conversely, it works the other way around. When a very unattractive girl is drowning and washes up, nobody knows CPR. Everyone, everyone suddenly left their oven on. It's, it's incredible. Lifeguards that have trained their whole lives for this one moment are standing there going, Should we put a coin on? How are you? Look okay, over scissors. I've got the last one. Can you please? Can you do it? I, I, work, uh, I do a bit of work with children as well. Um, I work in child care centres and, and do babysitting. It's fantastic. I love my kids and, and everything. And I, they've never had, I've never had any issues with them at all, ever. Never, never had an issue. They've never frightened me but until last Thursday. Uh, one of them gave me a bit of a fright, a bit of a surprise. And I was sitting there. And I was uh, watching television on the sofa, and I turned around, and one of the kids, little Jack, he's on the bench, with a metal knife, get this, trying to pry his toast out of a live toaster. I, I, blew, and I, I ran over there, I said, give me that! Jesus, use a fork, it's got a Benny bit. <laughs> 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 and I teach him. <laughs> we also played, um, we played Chinese Whispers as well. Played Chinese Whispers, we, we love Chinese Whispers. We all sat down in a circle. And uh, I, I thought, well, being a responsible adult, maybe I'll start it off today. Maybe I'll start it off. The, the kids always did it. It's my turn. So I sat down. I thought of a good one. Sat there patiently and just watched it go around the circle like that. A bit of laughing here. A bit of giggling over there. And you can imagine what I was thinking. You know, what sort of twist they're going to put on my Chinese whisper this whole time. But it eventually got to the end. And uh, little, little Billy stood up and I said, Billy, you're the man. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. What was the Chinese whisper, buddy? And he looked a bit nervous, to be honest. Uh, he stood up and he said, um, oh, all right. the Chinese whisper was, your mum's a filthy whore. <laughs> and, I know, incredible. I, could, I, could, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. I could not believe my Chinese whisper went through a whole circle of six old chickens. It did not change once. <laughs> Unbelievable. Tears these days. Anyway, I've been Alex. You guys have been fantastic. Uh, I hope we'll see you around very soon. <laughs>